In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Forge Photoshop action. So I've got this image here, we're going to be running the action to create this effect. So the action creates a lot of broken up uh, rocks, it creates a textured background with a lot of cracks and uh, when the cracks sort of uh, intersect the area that we define in the photo, uh, they start glowing. So uh, a few other examples I have here is this guy here. Uh, ran the action, I changed the colors a bit uh, and the options that you get and yeah you can see over his face here that uh, when the cracks enter they sort of split open a bit and they glow and we can we can choose the colors uh, do all sorts of things so uh, a few more examples got this illustration created this this guy here Okay, and we've got um, some options over how dense uh, we want all the rocks to be. And yeah, like I said, uh, lots of color control. So let's now get into it. So I'm just gonna close all these down and start off here with our base image. So there's a few important things you just need to check off before we uh, load up the action. So in the layer panel here, just make sure that your, uh, your layer is set as the background. So you should have uh, that background text with the lock symbol so for example if you don't have it you open up your photo and it's not there just go to layer new background from layer and it sets it as a background uh, also in the layer panel just go up to the top here and go to panel options and just down the bottom make sure add copy to copied layers and groups is selected next go to the image mode go to uh, sorry image menu go to mode and make sure RGB color mode is selected and 8 bits of channel. And lastly, if I just go to image size, just ensure that uh, you're using a decent sized photo. I would probably stick away with going uh, using photos under a thousand pixels, basically because the, the effect quality uh, sort of diminishes the lower you go under a thousand pixels. So uh, just keep that in mind. Alright, so what we need to do now is create a new layer. So, uh, layer, new layer. It needs to be called brush, all in lowercase. Okay, so, okay. So, with the brush layer selected, what we do, uh, if I hit B on the keyboard, get my brush out, right click uh, to bring out the brushes, just kind of select a soft brush, and what you want to do is pick a color, it doesn't matter, and we want to brush over our photo. Uh, where we want all the effects to sort of concentrate around and grow out from so uh, Instead of watching me do this. I've, I've done one a little earlier. So this one here um, I just masked around the area that I want and you can see that's done on the brush layer so That's really all you need to do. So uh, what we want to do now is load up the actions panel so go to the window menu go to actions it will pop up here. Select this top right hand corner icon, go to load actions and select the forge.atn file and it appears here. So you can see we've got three options, rock density low, medium and high. Uh, I recommend you know starting off with low and if the action finishes and you want more rocks, uh, play it again with medium. If you want more, try it again with high. Okay, so that's all done. All we need to do now is click play on this uh, action. So the effect takes about three minutes to build. So just click play and come back to it. Uh, come back to Photoshop in a few minutes time. I'm just gonna skip ahead on the video and get to the result. And then we're gonna go down through every single layer and talk about how to uh, make some customizations to it. Okay, so the action stopped and you can see we have the default result here. So just remember that the default colors are these oranges and um, that we can change all that pretty easily. So that what we want to do now is just minimize the actions panel and jump into the layer panel here. So there's a lot of layers and folders here and what the very first thing you want to do when the action's finished is with the folder that's already selected, uh, just hover over the arrow, hold down Control-Alt uh, and Command-Option on a Mac. Just click on that arrow 
and it quickly collapses all the folders so everything uh, is neat okay so we'll start from the top I have the brush layer still on so uh, one thing to remember about this action is every time you run it you're going to get a different combination of where these rocks appear and also these cracks that you can see that come into the photo uh, they're always going to appear in different spots as well the background texture will be different basically everything will be randomized so if you want to try for a different combination just delete these and click play in the action again okay so got this layer here called add sharpening so it just adds a little bit of overall uh, sharpening over all the elements so you can leave that one on or off this one here by default it is off it's called downlight it just adds a little bit of soft <coughs> soft light at the top here so you can you know if you hover over the opacity handle here click on that word opacity and drag to the left and drag to the right you can you know choose how dense you want that to be okay moving down we have the color folder so this is where we can make all the changes to the color. Uh, so we'll go down one by one. So this top one here, I like to just fiddle around with to adjust the overall saturation a bit. So you see if I if I drag around this middle handle, it can increase the, the color saturation. So maybe let's boost, up, boost that up a little bit. And what you can also do with this hue slider, because most of our image is um, black and white, we can just drag this around or randomize the color of uh, all the glows but there's another way we can do that as well uh, so we'll show, that, show you that in a sec this layer here just brightness uh, quick one to check just jump in here and play around with these handles to see if you want it to be any darker or lighter in areas this one I might just boost it up a fraction uh, use a single color flick this one on if you want to just apply a single color over your uh, design Contrast, uh, adjust opacity. So if you just click on this, uh, click on the opacity word here and just drag to the right and left, you can increase the amount of uh, contrast. So generally I like to keep it slow, but of course it depends on your photo. For this one, we'll just add a, add a little bit. So these 13 folders here are some additional color options. So what you want to do here is uh, just remember that when the action's finished, the color option one is selected. So if you just go down here and flick these on, you have a range of different um, preset color looks. So, and what you can do with these is also adjust the opacity again. So say that effect's too strong, but you still like it, but just want it to be a bit more subtle. Um, let's drag the opacity down to zero and we'll just slowly start dragging to the right. So we use like 53% of that one. We'll go down the bottom here and this one here we might just um, just add 53% of that one so you can keep going through all these and um, adjust their opacities to sort of build your own color combination don't mind that one okay and down the bottom here uh, use original photo color so what you want to do here is use the mask to brush on where you want the original colors of the photo to appear. So at the moment the mask is black so it's hiding it all. So if I just um, select that mask and hold down Control i to invert it, flip it to white, you can see that it's added all the colors back in. But what I recommend you do with this is <clears throat> just grab a soft brush, so hit B on the keyboard. I'm just going to change the opacity of the brush to 33%. I'm going to use the square brackets here to adjust the brush size. And with a white brush, I'm just going to brush into this mask really softly. And you can see I can bring back um, color of the photo in certain areas. So just remember that. We'll just keep a little bit of orange. So that's the color folder. So moving on down, we have the forge folder. So if I, so if I flick this off, you can see uh, this houses all the effects. So we'll go inside and go from the top here. So this one here, change overall colors. It's similar to the effect of using this color saturation uh, here. So, but I, I think you should use this one instead. So just jump in here and uh, grab this hue handle and you can play around with different uh, colors. 
So for this one, I might try and match up that this orange here on the seats. Okay, going down, here's our rocks folder. So, so if I flip this off, you can see all the rocks are gone. And what I've tried to do with this action, uh, with the default result, is that the rocks won't intercept too much into the area that we define. So you can see around the engine here, uh, and the headlights, there's no rocks. Uh, okay, so and what you can see here that on the folder it has a mask. You can see that I've clearly masked that out. But for, for example, if I hold down shift and click on that mask, it will hide the mask. So you can see that rocks now intercept over our photo. So what you can do uh, is if I just grab a white brush and brush into that mask, I can start brushing in, whoops, I'll turn this capacity back up. I can start brushing in where I want those rocks to appear over the photo. So for this particular photo, there's not too many rocks. So I'm just gonna pretty much brush everywhere. Just like that. Okay, so keep that in mind that that mask is there and it's um, not allowing any rocks to enter into the area that we define, but you can quickly do that by just either hiding the mask or brushing in where you want them to appear specifically. Okay, so we jump inside the rocks folder here and there's a bunch of different layers. So at the top here we have uh, rocks brightness. So what you can do here is if you double click on this one, and with these two bottom handles, we can uh, adjust the appearance of these rocks. So if we drag this black one here to the right, it's going to increase the brightness of our blacks. So you can see that there. So uh, by default, it's just turned up a fraction, but you can play around with that. And this one here, if you drag, drag this one uh, inwards uh, from right to left, it will crush the highlights of the rock. So if you wanted black rocks, you could bring this all the way down uh, like that. So uh, that might be a look that you prefer, but if you want the um, strong highlights, just boost this right back up, just like that. Um, and there you go. So that's that one. Uh, rocks glowing highlights, if you flip this one on and off. Uh, so say for example, if you look at this rock at the very top here, as I flip this one on and off, it just adds a little bit of glow. Whoops, a little bit of um, glow from the highlights. Turn that one back on. Uh, okay, so moving on down, we have these layers here are all our rocks on individual layers. So if I move this one around, you can see that we can reposition these uh, wherever we want. Same with all these. You know, so you can have spend a bit of time in here uh, manually moving these around in, into different spots. Uh, if I hold down Alt on this and click and drag down, I can make a copy of that rock layer and you know I can move this up further and you can rotate it, uh, do whatever you want. So above these rock layers, you can flip on these colors. What that'll do is basically fill in uh, our rocks with a color. So if that's too strong, you can uh, yeah, you can play around with different colors here. But for our example, I'm going to stick with these oranges. Just turn down a little bit. So you can color each set of rocks individually if you wanted to, but just by flipping these, uh, these color layers here on. Okay, so that's the rocks folder. So moving down, we have light streaks. So I'll just turn this folder off for a second to demonstrate this. So uh, when you find the action, the default effect is that uh, wherever these little cracks appear within your photo, you'll see vertical light streaks come up from them. So that's coming from inside this folder here, the light streaks. And we've got this one layer turned on here called vertical light. So if I turn that one on and off, you can see uh, the effect there. And if you want to boost the brightness of that, you just flip the top one on like that. And if you want to be even stronger, you can just uh, hit Control J, duplicate that, and you can make it stronger. But what's also uh, in this folder is horizontal light as well. So down at the bottom here, if I turn this one on, you can see that there's now horizontal light coming out from those hot spots on our photo, and you can again boost it. Or you can turn all of them on and have lights going everywhere. So just keep that in mind that default 
uh, look is that it's just got this one uh, ticked on here. All right, moving down, we have white particles. So if I turn this one on and off, you can see it's all these particles that emit from the area that we define, and they sort of slowly uh, rise up into the air. So there's a couple of layers in here. You can uh, move those around. You can duplicate them, scale them. Uh, but what you can also do, if you want it to be a bit more prominent, you can select the entire folder, hit Control J, duplicate it, and you can see that the uh, they are much brighter now. But if you want to um, not have it as bright, but want it to be a little bit, a little bit brighter than that, flip it on and adjust the opacity of the folder. Just like that. All right, so I'll flip the rocks back on and see how that's looking. I might just delete. Um, those. So going on down, we have the large glow dots. So again, I'll just turn off the rocks so we can see this a bit better. So by default, there's only one of the two layers uh, flipped on here. So what this is, if I just turn it on and off, it's just a very subtle, uh, random little glow spots around the area that we define. And you can double click on the layer above it to uh, randomize its color. Uh, but by default, the ones that are really prominent are turned off. So if you jump into the large glow dots folder up down the bottom, flip this one on, and you can see that uh, there's much larger glows now appearing randomly uh, around the design. So you can, yeah, like I said, double click on this uh, layer above, and you can randomize the color of these. What I also like to do here is if I zoom out and hit Control T. You can see that there's a bit of room to uh, reposition this. So I'm just going to place that there. Uh, something like that. So just remember that you can zoom out and you know uh, manually position where you want those glows. All right, so moving on down, we have the darken uh, photo edges. So if I turn this one on and off, you can see around, just around the perimeter of where we define, it adds a little bit of a, um, like a drop shadow to help it sort of um, stand out from the background. But if you want that off, just flip it off. Okay, so this lay, uh, this folder here it cracks. If I turn this one on and off, you can see that in the background, it's all those cracks and also the cracks that intercept with our photo that start glowing. So let's go inside here and take a look. Expand this a bit. So this top one here, if we want to just change the color of the glows within our photo, double click on this top layer and drag this handle around and you can, uh, yeah, change the colors that way. So I didn't mind a bit more of a yellow. So what I'll do here, I'll just flip all these off and go from the bottom. And so this one here, outer cracks narrow, so they're the little thin cracks that appear everywhere in the background. Uh, outer cracks wide, these are much thicker ones that you can see that sort of taper off around the edges. This one here is pretty much just the base um, look of the cracks, so they can, um, yeah, so they just sit around the edges of your photo, they don't cut in too far. Uh, are set up so it only cuts in about 20 pixels within the uh, the area that we brush, so keep that in mind. Uh, I'll come back to that one. And these top three here, if you, tip, if you turn these ones on one by one, it just increases their glow. So if you're on the action and you're thinking that these, these glows are too strong, jump into the cracks folder and just turn these off one by one and um, you can increase the glow that way. So cracks, dark at edges, this just helps define the borders uh, of the cracks a little bit more. So where can I... So if you just look at the top of the bike here, as I flip this on and off, you can see it just helps define the edges a bit, a little bit darker. And if you want it to be more defined, flip on this top one here. And you see it just makes it a little bit darker and a little bit more defined. So just subtle effects, but uh, if you're into manipulating this effect quite a bit, jump inside this folder and mess around with all those options. And again, if you're using um, 
this action on a face. So, for example, open this this back up. So I run the action, I change the colors, and uh, these cracks appeared here. Uh, but there was a crack that ran through his eye that I didn't want. So what you want to do, you know, is just use that folder mask to brush away wherever you don't want cracks to appear. So if I just select the mask, hit B on the keyboard, grab a black brush, and you know, down the bottom of the bike here, there's a crack there. So if I brush over that, it's gone. All right. So any any uh, crack you don't want to appear, just use the mask, uh, the folder mask. And it's, that's the same with all these other folders. Okay, so darken edges, I'll flip the rocks back on, so we'll see what we've got. Um, darken edges, if I flip this one on and off, you can see that it just adds like a soft vignette around the edges, I mean the borders um, of our document. So if you want to adjust the opacity of that, you can do that. Or you can turn it off if you don't want it at all. It's pretty good on this design, so we'll keep it. Background texture, I'll flip that on and off. Just a little bit of grunge texture, very subtle, that sits in the background, just helps it all uh, tied all together. Uh, if you want to play around with those, you can jump inside here and uh, mess around with those layers. Photo, this is our main photo folder. So let's go inside and talk about these. So I'll go from the bottom here. This one just adds, um, it's, I've called it base photo with black outer shadow. So if I just flip this one on above it, and I'll turn this one off. You can see that it darkens the edges a bit, so it just helps define our subject in the background a bit. But if you prefer it with it off, flip it off. This just fills our photo in. Um, sharpening just sort of boosts the contrast and sharpen up some of the details a bit. And this one here, overlay photo highlights. What this one does, it will just overlay the highlights of our photo. So if I move this out to the side. Uh, you can see that it's just the highlights and it's just going to sit on top. So if you wanted to boost the brightness of the whites, just flip this one on. By default it's on. Alright, so background colour. Here we can um, just double click on that box and change the colour. So if this, I'm just going to go a bit of a red, but yeah, you can mess around with uh, all the colours. And if you want this whole uh, design to bleed onto the original background of your photo, just flip off the background color. So what that'll do then is, um, say if there were you know, trees or whatever behind this bike, that they will now appear in the design. So um, just uh, keep that in mind. Okay, and also if you wanted to export this as a PNG with a transparent background, turn these both off. So now you can save that out as a PNG and drop that onto other artwork if you want. So that's essentially uh, really all you need to know about uh, this action. Uh, just a lot of, uh, just encourage you to jump into these layers and, and mess around with you know, changing the glow colors and uh, you know, the, the glow dots folder, jump in and turn this one on. See if you like it or not, move it around. Um, yeah, jump into this color folder here. Actually, that looks pretty good. I'll just, I'll just add a little bit of that. I'm going to flip the sharpening back on. And what I might do now is just, I'll just group these so you can see the before and after. Okay, now I do have uh, also a set of 200 uh, photo color effects as well uh, that you might want to look into. So if I just uh, flatten this design. Just flatten this and remove this. So now I've just got a one layer. So um, what I also like to do with my designs is, yeah, use those um, photo effects. I'll put a link in the video below. So the way they work is if you just open up this mask looks folder and there's a whole bunch of different color looks and you just click play on them and they apply subtle um, color looks and each each time you click play on one of these it creates two layers. It creates a master color one so you can adjust the opacity of that to apply how much color you want 
and then you've got the luminosity layer it's like brightness and contrast so you can adjust the opacity of that and you know when you click on another one the effects stack so I can shift select these I could bring them up to the order if I want and if I shift select those and I can adjust the opacity at the same time just like that okay so that's it if you're uh, have any troubles with the action just send me an email and I'll help you out but if not I hope you have fun using it thanks